You are aware of just how strong the supporters, and the supporters, the Obidati movement, the obedient movement, are on yes. social media. Are you aware? I am gladly aware. And I'm humbled by that fact. Are you worried that this election might be shaped largely by the force on social media? It might be uh, issues might be directed and guided or also pushed by social media. Are you also aware about that? You see, we are genuinely of the opinion that uh, some opponents to us underestimated what you just said now, how powerful labor has come to be and how powerful it is going to be by election day. Uh, the so-called runoff they're talking about may not even happen. They're already and talking about a runoff. It may not even happen, I tell you. With, with you think that you, you might win on the, the first the, ballot? Is that a thinking of the Labour Party? Absolutely. You think you have what it takes I, to be able to I do that? I think by the special off. grace of God Almighty, we have that. It might not even get to a runoff. Um, what do I, you see uh, in your permutations, You're looking at the crystal ball? How do you think, see this election coming out? What figure do you think I your see, party might be able to pull? I, I see, I will, please allow me not to call the names of the parties. The one in Kano, just remaining there, because <laughs> in Kaduna, it is almost gone completely ever since I appeared. That party no longer exists in Kaduna from when I declared for Labour Party. Um, it's not even going into Jigawa, Kasina. It never even got the chance to get in there. The other party coming from the, you know, the party of the day is running down by the day. It's running itself down by the day. Again, I don't want to go into those issues at all. Our lives are depreciating by the day, and so will their votes fall as Nigerian lives, the quality of lives fall. Um, the other party has really not proven it, it, itself capable of wrestling power away. And uh, it done itself in from the conduct of its primaries. And that leaves only one party standing and standing strong. Again, that is why we see the social media attacks, the unethical practice, uh, being motivated purely for political gains. Now, if you look at what is happening, you, uh, at the end of the day, you have a huge support base, and there are even criticism that your party's support base is limited to the social media. Uh, there are questions as to the structure of your party and the question mark on whether or not you even get the kind of funding to be able to run the campaign and perhaps be able to pull a win off in this election. Excellent question. Let me take it one after the other. Um, you spoke about being on the social media. Uh, do I have your attention? Absolutely. Please yes. go ahead. You spoke about being on the social media. It is being wrong, read wrongly. What is happening is that more of our supporters are those who are elitist, in a sense. And even those whom we think are rural, in a sense, are increasingly inclined to go the labor way. We are making them more aware and more literate. And to be with us, they make the extra efforts to become socially literate, socially aware, and are beginning, even for the sake of Labour Party, participate in the social media space. They are beginning to realize how easy it is. For someone like me that has lived all my life in the education world, this is more than exciting. Because I get my excitement from seeing people learning and moving up the education ladder. And that is what uh, labor is doing at the moment. We are not limited. It is that the increasing number of those who are joining labor now are those that have this general modern attitude. They're more like all the young population are in labor. 99.5 possibly 
of the young voting age are labor. These are the people who use social media. You'll be, now, go to the motor parks, go to the markets. Those are not social media platforms. Go to shopping malls, even security men who open gates. When they see labor, they become excited. Go to the airports. You might say they're only the privileged to travel by, by air. No. Those who work in the airports, everywhere you go, from particularly the motor parks, everywhere you interact, it is labor, it is labor. Mm. We are not limited. Then the other one you spoke about, structure. The structure we have is unique. Labor is not about very elaborate uh, party organ for now that is determining the structure of our society. Labor is about the ordinary politicians being able to make their voices heard. And this difference has to be realized. It is not where you'll have one huge figure, a former minister or, you know, being the uh, national chairman of a party and the uh, party secretaries, another huge powerful figure who are able to use enormous resources to ensure that they have um, choice local government uh, offices. Labor is cost conscious. And that is why we want to avoid wasting Nigeria's resources on frivolities. We know what frivolities are. And we know where the sweat of our loyal supporters should go. That is why we choose the kind to, to have the kind of structure we have now. Mm. In fact, no other party has the kind of structure that Labour has. And what kind of structure Last, is that? Uh, that is people-oriented stru structure. I mean, uh, Th that is actually uh, stratified structure. Can that structure win election? Has absolutely, it been tested? absolutely. It's about the issue of capacity. Whether or not the Peter Dati ticket has a capacity to lead Nigeria. In fact, that has been questioned recently. Governor of, uh, of Delta State and the vice presidential candidate of the PDP has said, Peter Abi does not have the experience to lead Nigeria. How would you react to that? That is absolutely untrue. In fact, um, I beg you to show me anyone who has had more experience in leadership in 2023 context. And by that context, I mean the candidates that we have now, the four leading candidates. I fail to see anyone that even comes close to His Excellency, Governor Peter Obi. Um, the world is now in a, a stage where we need private sector experience. And among all of them, no one has as much private sector business sense, prudence, frugality, Ability to manage persons, communities, interest groups, none, none, none of the other three has as much. Um, I have reached a stage now where um, I will just overlook and avoid calling names of any other candidate because Nigerians are already seen and speaking. The Senate is already in impeachment mode. My case has been made. And if others are speaking what I used to say four years ago, I think I can move up mm. to more important things. And that comment is a very unfair comment. And I would like to think that very soon, the maker of that comment will have to retract because it shows he has no idea about what capacity is. Um, reading through uh, His Excellency Governor Peter Obi's resume, uh, what he did in the banking industry, even before then, the businesses that he ran. Come on. And then when he became a governor from private sector, and the success that he marked as a governor for eight years, again, 
How many of those who claim to have had experience before becoming governors became governors and regretted afterwards? Not Peter Obi. He is a very happy free citizen roaming all over the world and today contesting. So the gentleman, my colleague, apparently we were in the Senate together. We went to Senate together uh, with uh, Governor Okoa. Uh, we used to sit not too far away. I have lots of respect for him. But I least expect him to misread what capacity is. For the Senate, When you speak of capacity, yeah. you're talking of people like Peter Obi. And with all modesty, of course, my humble self.